Hello, everybody. Welcome to Nintendo Power Block, episode 214. I am one of your hosts, Corey Deer. Get alongside me, as always, is that retro code, Eddie V. We have presented Impa, and she is our queen. Uh, Hello, everybody. Yeah. Speaking of, our Hylian heroine is back, Celeste Roberts. Hey, I was off fighting some problem. <laughs> I wish. If I can, if I could move like Impa, I might have to start adventuring. Yeah. And, oh, I can't wait till we get to that discussion because I, I, I was just, I seen her and I was just like, her attack movements. I'm like, oh, yeah, she's queen, queen, just automatically queen. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, uh, we're gonna talk a lot about uh, Hyrule Warriors: uh, Age of Calamity tonight because of to- the Tokyo Game Show trailers and stuff happened and they look great to uh say the least so but it, it i feel like i haven't talked to you guys really in a while ed it's been what a couple days i feel like i mean saturday of course we talked for, for boss rush but just like i don't know i've just been really busy and tired and celeste has been gone so it just feels like <laughs> i feel like we're all finally back in the groove Hanging out, talking Nintendo, being where we're supposed to be on a wonderful, rainy, dark Monday night. Uh, I, yes. Yes. I'm getting ready uh, for my Sloppy Joes. I know what I'm going to be. Oh, I cannot wait to Sloppy have Joes? Sloppy Joes? Wait, no. Okay. Yes. Back up. Sloppy Joes. What? Say, say, yes. say some words about these Sloppy Joes, Ed. So... Normally during Halloween, um, I my mom makes sloppy joes, and because it's a Saturday on that day, um, when I go on vacation, um, I'm hoping to like actually make some sloppy joes, um, throughout the month of October and while I'm on vacation, because it's a perfect time, uh, to make sloppy joes and even chili. Um, well, me and my uh, one of my managers was was talking about chili and stuff, and she's talking about oh, you can add the little macaroni bits into it and i'm just like bits. i've never thought about that mm-hmm. yeah um yeah macaroni yeah okay. i know um, i know what macaroni is but i just i'm it, i'm I mean, playing it out i'm playing it out in my head how <laughs> this, it sounds like a yes. goulash a little bit kind of yeah but it but like i i go get the man witch and the ground beef and i haven't cooked like with joseph in a long time so i kind of want to cook some while we go into october and just like on a nice cold day when i'm off of work and i don't feel like driving to go get food or anything i'm like hey let me make some man which you know make it like cook the ground beef throw the sauce in get have my good old buns and then eat it i'm thinking of because i think they make the hawaiian bread uh sandwich buns like burger buns. Oh, like the Hawaiian rolls, I like could, the yeah. Like, oh man. Yeah, they. I think they make some, so I'm gonna try to find some and and make it. Cause uh, I, I'm like I miss having sloppy joes. I haven't had them in not in years, but I haven't had it since last year. Um, and stuff. And I know some people uh toast they buns just really nice and some people put butter on it i don't know why but uh i because butter try goes on everything um, butter goes on everything yeah. yeah not everything you can't put butter on the banana you can have you tried it no if you're making <laughs> like, i guess i think bananas foster calls for butter <laughs> <laughs> See with bananas, I'd be like, oh, "Dang, I want a banana split or a banana uh, Sunday um, without the nuts." Um, but yeah, like during during October in the fall, I just like a good, nice type of Joe, and I want to make some. So nice, nice. I'm man. I just like my my mom used to make like when I would get sick, she used to make sloppy joes, but she would put like shredded like really fine shredded cheese on it and just Ooh. smash it in between buns that sounds just, amazing mm, yeah i think you just <laughs> amplified the sloppy joe again. yeah it <laughs> was it was the game. <laughs> look there's sloppy joes and then there's sloppy joes with cheese and let me tell you just, just let me tell you if you if you get it just right before the cheese melts it's like 
uh-huh. it's even better because you get that nice hot sloppy joe with like the the cooling tinge of the cheese and it's just like oh. mm. man my mouth like is watering now just chili thinking about cheese it. dog with the perfect coolness yeah Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm. yes mm. those are just some good ones mm. Oh. Mm. Uh, do y'all like did- cornbread with your chili I love cornbread. Yes, I do. I don't no, think I've ever I had cornbread. <gasps> In your life? Uh uh-uh. uh. I don't think oh. I, I don't. I just don't think I ever have. Really? Yeah. Have you ever been to a Cracker Barrel before? Yeah, but I usually get like the biscuits. I, like yeah. <laughs> you don't get the cornbread muffin. <laughs> no, I. I, I oh. To be fair, to be fair, it's I, probably been like five years since I've been to a Cracker Barrel oh. too. So I mean. Even though there's one three minutes from my house, <laughs> there's one fifteen minutes from mine. I don't do their I don't do their cornbread because it's a it's a mm, a little it's a little dry. It's, it's a little dry. It doesn't have any. It don't have a soul to it. <laughs> the like, key is you put some sour cream in your mixture, and that makes even Jiffy cornbread mix moist. My um, my mom put some kind of it's not onion. But it, it it's some kind of jalapeno. She might it put maybe, jalapeno, huh? That's a popular it addition. Because it, it is green, but it's not hot or anything. Is it just green peppers? You think it's just green peppers? Green, pe- like a bell pepper? Yeah. It may be a it may be a bell pepper. Uh, but I have had it with jalapenos, and that it is good that way. I love that. I love that hot spice kicking in with the butter still on it. Like, if it like it gives it some good seasoning, just like mm, yes. Mm. But then if that mm. happens, that means right after church, <laughs> I gotta get. I gotta wait for the chicken. I gotta wait for the mashed potatoes. The, oh, I just go. We just go Sunday dinner. If my mom's gonna do any cornbread, we going straight Sunday dinner. That's all to it. Yeah, a plate will be done. And y'all will hear me for the next seven hours. <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you. My favorite. There's I. There's two things I really enjoy about like breakfast food. Since we're on the Cracker Barrel kick right now, one <laughs> one is like a really good biscuit and gravy. Just like yeah. the oh biscuits. My God. Sometimes like my mom used to yeah. make like the flaky biscuits, like the ones that you could peel, right? Mm-hmm. And then I would just Ooh. like scoop the gravy like it was like. Tostitos and salsa or something, <laughs> but it was with these flaky uh, biscuits. So that is delicious, Corey. Oh, I was, can't wait. It was so good. This. It was so good. So she makes the gravy from scratch with some ground sausage and pepper. Oh no, she gets the the Bob Evans one. She's not that good. Sorry, mom. I, I like your breakfast, but sausage. As long as it tastes good, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, it is good. It's oh, it's so good. Is it the Pillsbury Doughboy? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, uh, it's the Pillsbury oh, biscuits. Was but um, with some, see, I can't do. I could do gravy with that, but I'm like, I like some good like jam on it, some good jelly mm, uh, mm. on those, cause those are really, really good. Mm, mm. Sorry, everybody. I even don't oh. have a snack to but <sighs> but the if other... you guys. Oh, go ahead, Corey. I was oh. gonna talk about biscuits, but you go. No, ahead. go ahead. No, because we're we're transitioning <laughs> so out of okay. biscuits. So keep going. Because I'm gonna tell you, I found a biscuit better than Pillsbury. Ooh, challenger! We approaches. get okay, and I'm not talking about homemade because um, I tried making homemade biscuits and it was not a good time. But I do like baking. I like making homemade cinnamon rolls and other stuff. But anyway, mm. for biscuits, if you go to Walmart or your local grocery store, I don't know if it's a regional thing, but we there's one called like Mary Sue, and they're frozen biscuits, and you're frozen biscuits. But they come out so fluffy and so buttery and delicious. Sit it in the chat. Um, <laughs> because I am going up to Wisconsin tomorrow because I need to. I want to go to the uh, the Adidas store and get some clothes. I'll be close to a grocery store that I normally go to. So I'll look for it. I'll, I'll, I'll look for it. Yeah, I'll look Mary for Mary B, everybody. My, my apologies, Mary B. <laughs> Mary B. If the if gonna they have it. it at the. If they have it at the grocery store that I get to, because I'm probably going to pick up the Brits cracker again, uh, uh, Corey. <laughs> no, sour- Corey, Dude, you started something. Them mugs, I, I have been fiending for them like crazy. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably go up there and get some uh, when I go up to Wisconsin tomorrow. Um, 
and I'll see if they got them, and then I'll report back on uh next week to see uh because and then I you know I got to still get my jam, jam. <laughs> Yes, I, I just had to, I, I had to share those biscuits because mm. <laughs> they're good. I, but, but you know, because I've never heard of most of the biscuits that I've seen has been, been like they're pills, uh, Pillsbury, but they always been in, like in that can and you take them out and make mm-hmm. them. I never seen frozen biscuits. And so now I'm happy to go look for it. It's in the bread section of uh, like Walmart and different grocery stores. Um Oh, now, okay, I love biscuits gravy, like Corey, but I also love biscuits with honey and butter, and I also like jam, mm. like strawberry jam. Mm. Mm, yes. <laughs> do y'all, do y'all ever do pies. Brenner? Do what? Breakfast for dinner. Brenner. Oh, yeah. Oh, all the time. <laughs> Especially when there's, mm. like, we're being lazy and there's nothing thought or anything. Like, we're just like, okay, we're gonna, we're just going to have some breakfast for dinner and i'm like i i probably do that at least twice a week to be honest with you (laughs) it's easy just throw something together i used to try to do like an omelet uh you know fancy it up with like ham green peppers Mm. and stuff tomatoes and all of that um and then probably go somewhere well not go somewhere but probably um do a hash brown with the two um so it just be that Mm. um I would do. I would drink orange juice with it, but I actually prefer like a big thing of cold apple juice when I'm doing mm. Brenner. Apple juice is good. Now you're about. I heard the magic word Popeyes. <laughs> Were you about yeah, to talk about their because, biscuits? <laughs> yeah, because we when I do Popeyes, uh, and we do get biscuits. Uh, we always make sure that they put in honey and. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they have some jelly with them, Um, but we always make sure that we do honey. So we put honey on our biscuits there. Can I I tell you a secret? Yes. uh, Okay. Well, I am a Louisiana lady, but Popeye's is not my favorite fried chicken chain, even though it is called Louisiana Kitchen or whatever. I I don't do KFC for chicken. I like, yeah, I know you like KFC. I, I like KFC too. I like churches and they have, they are known for their honey butter biscuits. And if you ever go to a gas station, I think I've mentioned this before, crispy, crunchy (laughs) chicken, honey butter biscuits. See, you blessed to have a churches. All the churches that I try to go to is in Chicago. Oh. And they are always. You know churches and they have fried okra. Fried Mm -hmm. okra. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. My. my (laughs) My family won't leave churches without that, without that fried okra. They don't because play. your family has good taste. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah do not. Oh, yes. Do not leave church. I'm sorry, Corey. We're just like having a grand. No, <laughs> I, got to, it's fine. Sorry. I I don't care. I just I'm just listening. <laughs> well, if you guys ever go to a gas station and you see crispy, crunchy chicken, you have to get their honey butter biscuits. Yeah. You might not be able to walk for the rest of the day, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. I can't wait till we get snack tendo. I think we started. I think we started with snack tendo. Ed, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is snack tendo. Well, snack tendo. So everybody who who probably follow me on Twitter and stuff, um, I bought um, the caramel apple jacks. Uh, oh, 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 wait, what? And MJ is very excited about this. Yes. Part, by the way, she texted so, me about it. <laughs> So the caramel apple jacks. Um, this is a seasonal item. This is kind of new because I've never seen apple jacks do anything like this. It's okay, but it's passable. Like you really don't need to get it unless someone, unless it's a good sale, you want to try it, do it. Um, the reason being is it doesn't have the apple jack taste. So you know that cinnamon really makes apple jacks. It has a certain taste. And this one, I think that caramel just, I don't even know if it's caramel. Like, it feels like you really can't taste anything. You know how you can taste the honey and honey nut Cheerios and just mix up a bowl of five? Um, you cannot do that with this one. Like, you could probably if you like, you know what, I need to get rid of this box so I'll eat it. You could do that. Other than that, yeah, it's not good. It's, so it's, it's doesn't bad. taste like a caramel apple? No. Mm-mm. Oh. Oh. Mm. 
but I like Apple Jacks, so I guess as long as we have the original, we're good. <laughs> yeah, and I was I I I was so enthralled that we had it at my job. I'm like, uh, I need to get this, and I brought a whole thing of milk. Was decided to get home, pour the pour the uh pour the box into a bowl, pour the milk, and just started digging, and just like I don't taste anything. Like, even when you eat all the cereal and you got the milk that you want to, like, slurp up or whatever, didn't even have that taste. I was like, oh, this is a letdown. Hmm. Wow. So, okay, that's sad. Wow. But I do want to taste the uh, pumpkin spice Cheerios and see how that tastes. Um, I think that's an annual seasonal item they have. It is, yeah. So... Well, I'm sorry that it didn't work out. Yeah, it it it. I think for some people, if you can taste it, they might like it. But it, to to me, it was just like it loses. I think without having that apple jacks cinnamon taste to it, it loses its it loses its flavor to it. Hmm. Hmm. Corey, you well, Ed, do you have any other snacks, or that's the one you wanted to talk about? Um, I did pick up some Trident Pineapple. It's their new flavor um, gum, and it's okay. It's really good. It's not that bad. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I know the Mountain Dew spooky one I talked about is out. Um, I've been trying to look for new flavors and stuff, and I haven't got a chance to go to the grocery store anything so i will report back next week definitely uh with the biscuits um and once again like if you guys recommend me to try something i will go out and find it and try it um i actually did have a vanilla pepsi though and the reason why i'm bringing this up is because i miss the lemon flavored pepsi the lemon flavored pepsi Pepsi. yeah so it was pepsi that had lemon in it it was very popular. It was really, really good. Because their raw cherry Pepsi is is no good compared to cherry Coke. Like, cherry Coke is delicious. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. Especially when it's a fountain cherry Coke. Yes. Ice. Not, yes. not can, not bottled. Like, you go to a Waffle House and they have their cherry syrup they can add mm-hmm. to it. And I, every time I do Subway... If I do a drink, it's always cherry coke. It's nothing else. There's nothing beats a nice fountain coke at all. Which I've been drinking a lot lately, which is, I guess, fine, which is good. <laughs> You're gonna be up forever. <laughs> actually, no. Actually, actually, cherry coke is like some of the coke stuff. Don't kick me, keep me up. They actually put me to sleep. Like huh? I'm, I'm literally like, okay, nighty night. Nighty oh, night. Good night, Ed. See you later. Uh, <laughs> well, well, I don't really have any new snacks to talk about. Um, you got your burrito over the weekend? No, actually, we got we got Rockneys over the weekend. I don't know if they have Rockneys by you guys or not. It's just kind of like Rockies, Rock like Rockneys, Rockneys. Yeah, it's like a it's like a smaller version of Applebee's or or fridays it's it's just that kind of food and we just we got they have this salad called the firestone salad and it's just it's just a normal kind of house salad with like tomatoes and onions and croutons and cheese and grilled chicken on it but it comes with this pita and like i don't know it's just it just Mm. felt really refreshing especially because i've been eating like crap for like two weeks and i still feel like crap from eating like crap so the uh, Firestone salad, you said? Yeah. I looked it up. It looks really good. It was good. It was very good. They also have a they also have like a chicken tender version of it where they just Ooh. dice up like fried chicken tenders. Also very good. But yeah, grilled chicken this salad is not the best for me. Yeah, grilled chicken salad. Yeah. Really like a good chicken grilled salad. chicken like Caesar salad too is just like Yes. Mm. Yes. Man. Let me look at their rock knees. I love their website because fresh fun food is in Comic Sans. I love it. <laughs> no, that's okay. I don't care what I mean, the some of the best food I've ever had has websites that look like they're from the nineteen nineties and I don't care. Yeah, I mean their website, especially when you get on their mobile site, it looks like a mm-hmm. uh it looks like a ninth grade web design school project and it's just wow. kind of like 
it exists, you know, it's fine. It gets the job done. Kind of like our it website. Well, <laughs> wow. yeah, our, the website looks nice, Corey. Yes, Don't it's sell professional. Short. Um, so it looks like it is in Ohio only, but it looks very good. I, I like the green, the red, and the yellow. Yeah, so that's also delicious. I told Corey that uh, the Earl of Sandwich is not in Chicago. We don't have it nowhere in Illinois in the Midwest. No. Yes. Oh, it's so good, I man. I don't think we have one either. I think the closest one to us is Philadelphia. So, and that's it eight, is. It's eight hours away. So for me, or I could just hop wow. on a plane in two hours and go to Disney and just eat one. So, <laughs> so the place you've had it is in Disney, and that's that's where you you fell in love with it. Yeah, there's also one in New York City. Yeah. Well, Not, you just have to go on vacation now. I know. That's <laughs> if I go, if 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 I go to Philly, I'm definitely coming home with the cheese Philly cheese steaks. Good goody moogly. I told I tasted one there with my friend, and I was just like, I can't eat this anywhere else besides Philadelphia. Earl of Sandwich does follow me on Twitter, so maybe I'll just reach out and see if they'll uh, mail me a few sandwiches. I'll be like, <laughs> <"Hey>, <laughs> <slip."> <laughs> Some- some frozen sandwiches and you just have to heat them up i mean look i've probably a couple times when we come home from from disney we try to take some sandwiches home with us and they stop they stop my dad every time because like a cylindrical sandwich wrapped in foil looks very suspicious when you're getting on an airplane (laughs) so csa doesn't play yeah they don't but also Uh Even a even like a two day old Earl of Sandwich sandwich, you just pop it in the oven for a couple minutes and just, just taste, wow, <laughs> tastes taste just like new. That's oven magic. Oh, it's so good. We have a <laughs> we have a segment on Tower Casuals called Sandwich Casuals, where all we do is talk about sandwiches from Earl of Sandwich for five minutes. <laughs> they wow. they follow Boss Rush Games, by the way, on on Twitter, so. Oh wow! Yeah, I got them to. Follow. Maybe you'll get a sponsorship. That'd be awesome. I would not say no to that. They don't even have to pay us. They can pay us in sandwiches. I don't care. Right. <laughs> or they can make you the franchise owner, and your life will never be the same. I know. Oh, you know, I would drive every almost every two weeks to get get, get there. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a I'll there's a like... vacant there's a vacant building three minutes from my house. We can put one in there, and it'd be fine. Used to be a Five Guys. Corey's life will never be. Oh, you don't. Oh, Five Guys didn't. They make moved. It. They moved. Oh. Into a bigger yeah, building. Because <laughs> it's so popular. Yeah. Five Guys is okay. It's not I mean, bad. I've never had I, Five Guys. I like dipping my burger, like, as I eat it in the malt vinegar. Ew, you're one of those so people. Have... You know what? I just and I like <laughs> dipping my fries too. Oh, you're I used like to do my that dad. Jack- my dad does that. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that with uh, the Jack Daniel burgers at Fridays. You are dipping um, in vinegar? No, uh, Jack Daniel sauce. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, yeah, so I'm they like, would put, the, yeah, yeah, they would put the sauce on the burger, but then they would also give you extra dipping sauce if you add mm. X, and I would because I'll cut my burger in half and dip it in for <laughs> extra sauce. I, don't know, I, don't know. Uh, I think everybody can tell it's been a slow news week for Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a Nintendo related food. Oh. BU is in the chat, by the way. She says she likes vinegar on her Five Guys for sure. So, as she has taste. Mm. Mm. I have to do, if I do vinegar, I have to only do it on subs, like oil and vinegar. Um, mm. subs. That's what I'll do. Mm. <laughs> Oh, I'm man. sorry. Was that was that all you had, Corey? Or you had? I don't food? have anything. I never have anything fun for this segment. I'm very boring when it comes to food. I eat the same things every day, every weekend, and it's just like I'm boring. Well, you you had a good lunch that the your job fed you. Yeah, but I didn't choose that. They just fed it to me. It was they they gave everybody steak, chicken, salad. I sent Ed a picture of it. I should have sent it to the chat. Uh, what else did I get? A baked potato. It was just like it's Texas Roadhouse. It's very basic, like steakhouse food, but it was it was pretty good. So they we did get dance. S- what? They still dance at Texas Roadhouse. I don't know. I I don't I don't 
I've I've only been there like two or three times, so I don't know. Oh. Uh, I don't know. My parents love it there. I could ask them, I guess. <laughs> Should I call my mom and ask her and put her live on the show and see what happens? <laughs> no. <laughs> their rolls, though. Oh, man. I could eat my weight in their rolls. <laughs> yeah, their rolls are so good with that butter. Oh, and their rattlesnake bites are really good, too. Have you ever had their rattlesnake bites? It's just are those the um like the fries covered in like jalapenos and cheese? Yeah, they're like they're just like the cheese balls with jalapenos deep fried, and then you dip them in like the Chipotle ranch stuff. Oh, it's so good. It's very good. She likes their. She used to like their chicken tenders, but they changed the recipe and ruined them. Yeah, that usually happens in some places. It's like when Wendy's changed their fries, right? Wendy's used to have like yeah. amazing mm-hmm. fries and then they mm-hmm. changed them and now it's like mm-hmm. uh, healthy fries with sea salt. It's like, no, go back to the garbage. We knew what we knew what we signed up for when we went through this drive through. Okay. We, we want <laughs> we, that, uh, that we, we were not uh, going to Wendy's to be healthy. <laughs> yeah. It's right. like oh, I'll have a uh, I'll have a double and a large fry, but a diet coke. I need to lose a few oh, pounds. I hate that. <laughs> I so much still hate that. Order large meal I mean, and get a diet coke. Don't get me wrong. Some people have to have the diet coke, like diabetics, and like people just prefer the taste of diet coke. But like, come on. But then what are you who, add, who, who are you you trying adding to... the milkshake for on the side? Everybody, everybody else. I'm, who who I'm are you? Fast food. <laughs> who, who are you? Who are you? You know. Who are you joking? Like, who's who are you trying to fool here? Uh, so, can I give a shout out to BU because she does a lot of cooking streams. I know she posts. Yes, stuff we're on talking her, about. She posts food. stuff on her Instagram all the time, and it's just like, man, I would hire you to cook for me and my in. wife, but I couldn't pay. I you pop into her stream. Yes, I'm poor. <laughs> I pop into her streams, and I'm like, come to my house. Yeah, I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> Please, uh, man. So. Well, I, I, it, uh, Celeste, do you have any f- food things you want to talk about? Yes. Um, B, you said she would love to cook for us, so we'll take you up on that offer when the world Yay. is not <laughs> Road the trip, world everybody. Is as it is right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got my Legends cookbook, which, if you guys don't know, it has a bunch of Legends of Zelda recipes, and I made the meat stew Please on Saturday. It's really I delicious. Add- I seen the picture and I was just like, ah, I gotta hear Celeste tell me about this. I was so happy. It's, it's very good. It's very hearty. I, I do recommend cooking the potatoes and the carrots for as long as you cook everything else, even though the recipe says just 30 minutes because they were still a little undercooked, but that could have been because I cooked mine too, cut mine too thick, but then I let them cook for a little bit longer and it was fine. And so we have a lot of leftovers. And I, I think my next thing this weekend, I want to make Chateau Romani from Majora's Mask. I think I'm going to make that this weekend. It is a, a, an alcoholic beverage. Ooh. And today, I tried the, smi- the spicy McNuggets from McDonald's because they were everywhere and I needed to know. Yeah, how was it? So they're okay. Um, I prefer Wendy's spicy McNuggets. The yes. sauce that you can, yeah, the spi- so they're not bad. They're peppery. Like if you've ever had their spicy chicken sandwich, mm-hmm. it's kind of like that where it's more peppery than, it's not a painful spice, but the sauce that comes with it is like a sweet heat kind of sauce. Mm-hmm. And I, I dipped my fries in that too. It, it's been a while since I've had McDonald's, but I was like, you know, I cooked all weekend. Um, <laughs> McDonald's fries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was. I, I mean, it's worth trying. It was. It was good. Um, yeah. Once you mention Wendy's, I'm just like, oh, they spicy nuggets be the bomb. Eh? Yeah. I, I don't think you can beat Wendy's or Chick Fil A spicy. Uh, I haven't. Chicken sandwich. They're, they're spicy chicken. They spicy. I had their grilled spicy chicken sandwich. It's good. But I know I had to go back and try it. Just their regular spicy chicken sandwich. Um, mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, it had flavor in it, and I was just like, "Ooh, this is good." Corey, what's right? I'm um, always yeah. right, Ed. I'm always right. But 
I'll, uh, I'm going to try to make some more of those recipes. Some of them, they look absolutely delicious, but they call for specific ingredients you might use like once. <laughs> They're, they might be kind of expensive. So eh, I'm going to see. Mm. But yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, oh. Snack Tender. I'm going to I'm gonna get Logan because he made some brownies. I'm just like, dang it, I want some brownies. <laughs> <laughs> brownies, uh, man, wow, good times, everybody, good times. Well, uh, I guess we can move along since we're what 33 minutes into this show. Uh, I'm skipping. I'm I'm skipping the housekeeping. If you made it this far, you've been here long enough. You know who we are. If you haven't, well, this is this is what happens. Uh, but we do. By the way, we'd appreciate if you'd like rate and review the podcast if you are listening to it in your ears. Uh, you know, give us a good review. Don't get don't give us a bad review. Only good reviews are accepted. Uh, and uh, you know, leave us a rating, like a five star rating. That also preferred or thumbs up on Spotify. I think it's how that works. I don't know. I only use mm-hmm. Apple Podcasts because I have an iPhone and I don't know any better. So, uh, yeah, give us those five stars. Give us a nice rating, nice review, uh, because it's going to help you in our October giveaway. Everybody, yay. Yay. I forgot the fireworks. I'm sorry. <sighs> yay. Celeste, you had one job. You failed. It's okay. Uh, We're giving away Pikmin 3. Uh, We're giving away a digital code for Pikmin 3 Deluxe on Nintendo Switch. The rules are simple. You can email us at nintendopowerblock at gmail.com a screenshot of what podcasts uh, you subscribe to us on and why you listen. A screenshot of your review and rating on Apple Podcasts grants you a second entry. So get those in. Get those in. We'll be announcing the winner of uh, the game during our live show on October 26th, which is October 28th audio show. And we will email you the code so you can have it preloaded and ready to go on October 30th when the game launches that Friday. Yeah, so, just in time for Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Get a look at that nice fruit. Oh, I have that juice it up. ready to go. Juice it up. <laughs> so. Can I wait? Yeah, so uh, we are giving away Pikmin 3. Get those in. Uh, I'll probably put a description in the show notes as well, uh, at least on this episode. So uh, hope you win. Good luck, everybody. Yeah. I cannot wait to see that game on my TV. So I could just marvel at it. <laughs> I mean, don't you already have it on Wii U? Can't you just plug in your Wii U and play it on there? <laughs> I mean, I can't. Yes, I can. But, I mean, you're talking to, you're talking to one of the biggest fans nintendo fanboys right here i know i know i was just messing with you he left he um is leaving everything to them in his will i know i know nothing to me though right ed right yeah thanks no, you would get you would get uh you would get all my my whole week collection and <laughs> my week collection, collection you hate me <laughs> you hate me that much you know the wii is like the worst console of all time i hey, hate that thing yourself- Hey, you can sell some of the games and get some extra money. Uh, I'm still looking. Even... I'm still looking for that bag of Wii and GameCube games, by the way, that I am missing, and it is breaking my heart that I can't find it. <laughs> There's like 25 games missing. I can't find them at all. Because if I leave you my Xbox One connection, you're gonna be like, "Good googly moogly." <laughs> I don't. I want Corey to say "googly moogly" at least once because I haven't heard him say it. Googly moogly. Yes, life is made. Good. Because <laughs> so, so. I love it. I love it. Googly moogly? What the... Googly moogly. I wish somebody in Final Fantasy would say that to a moogle. <laughs> Googly moogly. <laughs> <laughs> and then like eight moogles come out. <laughs> Square Enix, you can have that one for free. You know you want to do that somewhere. You can be in a kid's game. It can be in like a Chocobo mystery dungeon. Have a ch- have the fat Chocobo from Final Fantasy, what, seven? Eight, seven, <laughs> say it seven. to a, a, a fat moogle and be like, great googly moogly. Uh, someone, oh, someone, wanted, someone wanted a chocobo <laughs> a refrigerator. So every time you open it up, it, it barks at you. What? Mm. It's like a chocobo refrigerator. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my man. goodness. Oh, does uh, that make me a terrible uh, person? I think it does. That's all right. It's fine. 
Oh. You know, it's fine. I mean, the only reason I would give you those games because I know you can sell them, make some money off. No, it. I, I can't sell do them. Why would I do that? I wouldn't do that, Ed. I wouldn't do that. Uh, but okay, so we're gonna get into our news slash topics. It's been a pretty slow week for Nintendo. You know, all the PlayStation and Microsoft hubbub going on. You know, Nintendo is just kind of like waiting patiently behind them. You know, and, and yes. Tokyo Game Show was this week. Uh, they showed off a lot for Switch. A lot of let's say we'll just we'll just say Japanese centric uh, games. Like, well, I you can look things like that up on your own time. Have safe search on, please. Uh, <laughs> that's all I have to say. Uh, but. The the two games that they should well three games really uh, but only two really worth talking about uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris they showed a lot of on on the Nintendo stage there or screen or whatever the digital I don't know I don't even know how life works any, anymore everything's just on a screen now uh, Monster Hunter Rise they showed a lot of and then of course Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity uh, really being shown off so. Uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity seems to be shaping up to be something really... It's either going to be something really special and really spectacular or really disappointing. It's There's it's, there's no in-between here. I think, I think the characters they're showing are great. I think uh, the gameplay with the champions and Young Impa they showed off for the first time, which everybody has, like... Mm-hmm really latched onto uh at this point and and showed some zelda gameplay celeste what did, what did, what did you think of all this i know you didn't really get to talk about it with us last week because you weren't here but uh i want to know your thoughts i'm so excited i didn't watch the tokyo game show but i watched the two minute video last week i kind of i, I like to watch little snippets of games i'm excited for rather than super long lengthy ones I kind of like to have I kind of like to go in as blind as possible and uh, just really excited I'm I I will not be able to claim the training sword because I have my copy of Breath of the Wild on the Wii U but if you have a copy of it on the Switch and you have a save file you can use the training sword I saw today on a tweet Yes, and you can also, if you pre-order it digitally, you also get the, the the ladle and the the cooking lid shield. shield. Yes, thank you. That's what I was looking for. That was the word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I I mean I have them both on Switch. Uh, I still have my copy of Breath of the Wild for Wii U sealed, so it's not wow. It's not being opened ever ever is there a reason like you want to keep it as a collector's item i mean i feel like the Wii sold so little right like i mean it only sold what 13 million units in five years and Mm -hmm. this was like the last major game made for this console i mean you had a couple other ones come out but this was the last major game for the wii u and i'm like this is going to be a collector's item someday like it's why i still have the gamecube version of twilight princess even though that is worth nothing now because it's it's on four console three consoles at this point but you know i i just think that that is going to be a cool collector's thing someday somebody's going to be point. somebody's going to be looking for that someday that's all i'm saying yeah. uh, 20 years from now like the way people are looking for gamecube games now 20 years from now somebody's going to be looking for breath of the wild for wii u and uh i'm going to have it sealed so and you can you can name your price with it. <laughs> I know. Right. I'm gonna pre order the I'm gonna pre order the next Xbox after this one with that copy of <laughs> of uh Breath of the Wild. Right. Wow. Uh but Ed, what did, what did you think of the Tokyo game show stuff? So I watched it Saturday morning. Uh it looked really, really good. They actually did the gameplay uh before they showed the trailer for it. Um and I, I, I was just amazed on how good it looks and how smooth and colorful. I'm like, it looks way better than the first Harbor Warriors, and it's, it got me excited. I would because, say it almost looks better than Breath of the Wild in some aspects. 
exactly because it looks very clean and i'm just like oh this has to be in breath of the wild too like the cutscenes and just like the way that link looked and stuff he looked in more detail in this one like just within the eyes and stuff um i like the uh surf the surf the shield surf uh mm-hmm. enemies and um just him going to different different places i think what where what they were showing um was more uh like you could still switch around with different characters and everything um and so when i seen impa they did a cut scene for her because she was getting chased um uh by by the uh goblets is it the goblets um uh, those little red things um that's the bow concert i think Marbles? the bow bow goblins yeah i think they're the marvel ones are the big ones are the big ones yeah um you actually fight that one uh which was almost kind of like in the very first hyrule warriors you'll fight like a big enemy who once you beat them he'll you'll be able to take over that area um and stuff and it looks really really good i'm just like i hope this speed i hope this work this color and this detail um really is going to be on the switch or switch pro they decided to do it because I, I understand why the version that version got delayed is because they was porting uh the wii u version to switch so it was ported the game so there was probably some stuff missing that they couldn't work on and then just just looking at this i'm like this is going to be beautiful and if they really tell a, a really interesting story on how everything played out before um like how the calamity happened and before Link went to sleep for a hundred years. If they really tell a great story, I'm going to be like, this may be up for running for a game of the year. You know, I I I have no I have I feel like it's going to be a, a eight or eight point five from a lot of places. It's not going to get high um, high review scores because it's kind of li- a little bit basic. But I'm just like I think the story and the characters, like their movements and stuff, if it if it really stays interesting, um, and it's something that you could probably beat in a weekend or within a week and a half, I if they could do put it off real well, it may be become a game of the year nominee for me, um, because it just looks so good and just like you, Celeste, I can't really wait to see more. But what they presented was really good. I wanted the Zelda scarf. I wanted the Link scarf <laughs> that he had. I think because he did he have the scarf in Hyrule Warrior. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, he had a scarf, a blue, a long blue. That scarf. was really cool. I really liked that aspect of it. Like I, I don't know why. I just really like. I really like the cover art of Hyrule Warriors. By the way, the, the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it does look good. I but think this one has a chance to really reignite and redo that series because I do like Hyrule Warriors, but I think this one, I, I haven't played it yet, of course, but I think I'm going to like it more. Well, if, like I said, it would be it was because of Hyrule Warriors, people got into the warrior style, style games because I'm like, it, I think at the time when it came out, it was one of the highest rated of the warrior series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think I mean, it actually like, went like, 800,000 copies or something it was it's it's i mean it always helps when like you attach a franchise to it right but sometimes Mm -hmm. a lot of people are in it for cash grabs like the gundam ones or like you know some of the other licensed ones but i feel like nintendo cares a lot about maybe not all their franchises to an extent but like their major franchises they really want especially zelda i feel like You know, they'll put Mario in anything, right? Like, Mario, you can, like, I don't know, go swimming in a bowl of cereal, and you're like, oh, that's a Mario game, it's gonna sell. But, like, Zelda, they're very (laughs) particular, right? (laughs) Like, what kind of... What kind of games they have this franchise tied to, and I think a lot of people were really skeptical, because... I mean, Dynasty Warriors, people like those games, but it's like... It's like a running joke in the video game industry. Is like, oh my gosh, there's a four thousandth Dynasty Warriors coming out, which they showed at Tokyo mm-hmm. Game Show. Dynasty Warriors Nine Empires is coming to Switch in March, right? Like, I mean, it's it's, it's what like the twentieth Dynasty Warriors games that that's yeah. not tied to a franchise. So like, it's it's just it's just like a running joke in the gaming industry. But when you tie like another one too, right? Ed, that we talked about 
that first year of Switch was uh, uh was Fire Emblem Warriors was yeah it was really it was a really cool designed uh it was a really cool Dynasty Warriors game where they actually added the rock paper scissors aspects of the old Fire Emblem games and mm-hmm. that really changed that little uh uh tweak really made that game stand out stand out right and uh and this is the thing because Cory Tecmo didn't start out. I, I don't know if the Gundam one came after Hyrule Warriors, but I they don't were know. Doing, it all blends together at this they point. They were, <laughs> yeah, they I don't think they were doing like the licensed Hyrule, the licensed Warrior games until Hyrule Warriors because the initial no, they were, they were doing some stuff, they were doing some stuff on PS2 and PS3, I think. Uh, licensed stuff like Samurai Warriors was one, Warriors or Orochi was one. There is some. There's the Gundam ones. There's some. There's some anime ones out there. Like I know. Uh, mm. There's a lot of anime ones, and like Persona Five Scramble is basically one of these games, right? Like I mean, oh yeah, they exist. These games exist. Well, because I know the initial reaction to Hyrule Warriors when it first came out was everybody was just like, "What is this nonsense?" Like people were mad and confused. It did like they showed it. The game came out, and it just so like crazy everybody was just like this is so stupid dumb fun but i'm loving it i still like i said i, I love the butt rock that's in the game yeah well i think part of the appeal of the original higher warriors 2 was like bringing it was like a timeline conversion right like every mm-hmm. timeline was somehow integrated into this game and even this even when uh definitive edition came out for switch like they started integrating breath of the wild stuff in there and you could play a zelda f- for the first time and it was really cool to see that version of zelda do things and really makes made a lot of people want zelda playable in breath of the wild too like I, which i still think is happening it's happening i i it can't not happen at this point like it's happening I'm telling you I'm telling you i really hope so i i've that has been my dream. She, she's gonna be. Child. she's gonna be able to do things that link can't do like i feel like link's gonna be the I feel like you're going to be able to switch between them. I feel mm-hmm. like Zelda is going to be a magic user. She's going to be a, a magic wielder. She's going to be a ranged character, use the bow more. Uh, and I feel like her version of the Master Sword is going to be the White Sword, right? Like, I, I really think that that's yeah. going to be her weapon, right? Or the, like, the 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 light arrows. Like, maybe you have to mm-hmm. go on a quest to, like, I don't know, recharge the I don't know, but... I want. Yeah. I wonder, could they do like? I don't want to say it's not not so much Astro Chain, but more like God of Warish in a sense for PS4. I mean, yeah, I mean that's an option too. But like instead of like using, I mean, you can use a button right to activate Zelda's whatever. But like, you can also toggle between them, and yeah. then maybe use Link on that button or something, and like. My, the ultimate dream is to be able to scan that Wolf Link amiibo in there and use all three of them. Oh, which heck would be yeah. Like, <laughs> look, I, 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 I think hmm. it makes sense, yeah. Uh, but back to back to Hyrule Warriors. The, I think the, the they showed off the champions, right? I think all the champions have really cool, unique gameplay. Uh, Rivali looks cool. Uh, uh, Urboza, I think, is, is everybody's favorite at this point. But... The one, oh, yes. the one character I feel like that caught everybody kind of off guard and everybody's kind of latched on to, like I said earlier, was Young Impa. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, what do you guys think of that character? Which is, by the way, the thumbnail for this episode. I already made it, so. <laughs> I'm so excited because she, she's she been such a, a great character throughout the series, and it's really cool to see how she's evolved in a way you know she used to be this nanny figure she was very elderly in the older zelda games and then in occurring of time she's a warrior and a sage the sage of shadows and seeing her as more of again as another sage-like character in breath of the wild is is cool and paya of her granddaughter is precious absolutely love her yeah <laughs> so uh, I, I love one of my favorite outfits to put on in Breath of the Wild is the stealth outfit where you dress like basically Link's version of Sheik. 
mm-hmm. and yeah. to be able to amplify those Sheikah powers as Empa, let's see her bring it. Come on. I am so excited. She's, this is her time to shine. It, it was that trailer of her being chased, and then she meets eye with eyes with Link, and then it cuts it to her actually fi- like Link is fine though, but then they switch to her, and it's just like you see her attack animation, and like when she's running, she got the two shadow versions of her, and I'm like, oh y'all going all ninja guiding on me, uh, ninja guided two on me on this, yes, queen, <laughs> queen. And I, I wish I, I cannot wait to play a sir in this game. Now Celeste, I think maybe out of all three of us, you might actually have the answer to this because you're so integrated into another Zelda podcast. <laughs> don't put me on the spot. <laughs> Why don't Link and Zelda age the way that everybody else seems to in this universe? You mean because in Breath of the Wild? Well, he was in that chamber. Right. He was in, um, and she, I guess, oh gosh, where's David Nystrom? He would you know right off the bat. Um, David. It <laughs> sounds like it, she's keeping him. She's fighting off Ganondorf. I, I don't remember. Did they, uh, I feel like they allude to it in Breath of the Wild. I'm looking at he, He's in that, he's in that chamber. So he's preserved, so to speak. The, the Shrine of Resurrection. Mm. When she awakens, wh- why doesn't Zelda age in Breath of the Wild? Um, two guys playing Zelda share that some... HMK theorizes that when a version of Zelda uses her power to seal away a great evil, they enter suspended animation and time does not affect them normally. Uh, so, so, That's so, so, what I'm thinking. I'm thinking she's using her magic to it's... hold Ganon back. Yeah, it says it says that Zelda was magically sealed away with Ganon inside the castle, and that's why she didn't age. Uh, yeah, that's a popular the, answer. Magic, question. everybody, magic. But then, what about the king? Because the king, he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. <laughs> I mean, he's dead. But like when you start Breath of the Wild, he's like in human form, he's, and then you, he's disguising himself like that to guide you. He's and a then zombie. Once you get everything, he'll turn into like the ghost. He reveals himself as a ghost, but he he assumes a human form to guide you. I, yeah. uh, otherwise, he he's a uh, he's on another plane of existence, <laughs> <laughs> to put it nicely. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and, that man. I'm gonna do some research. Ooh, what if you could play? What if you could play the king in Age of Calamity? You probably you might will be at able some point. to. Like, I mean, he's shown. Yeah. So I think there's they're they're gonna pull a lot of characters out of here that you aren't gonna expect. I feel like. So unless unless they're going for like a more story driven experience, honestly, like you could you could do like eight to ten characters and be fine. I guess. You mm-hmm. know. Uh. Well, age are there calamity. any characters you guys would like to see that were not shown in any trailers? I um, want to fight as one of the big fairy people. <laughs> yes, you just hug and kiss everybody to death. Yeah. Oh, but she has the big juggle juggles. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the juggle physics? <laughs> jiggle physics? Uh, I call them juggle juggles. Uh, oh, I kind of would... Uh, man... So the title of the episode, the, by the way, <laughs> the end of Zora Domain is the uh, I guess he's the prince, uh, Sidon. Sidon that everybody just has the hots for. Um, yeah, but well, not in a calamity, he's a baby, and yeah, he's a calamity. baby, they showed him. <laughs> but, but if they, I mean, I think if there's a character that is like him, like he has a twin, or they just make some kind of character up like him, I would like to see, I would like to play someone like him in the game. They have a lot of Zora soldiers wandering around in Breath of the Wild. Some young male Zoras, in addition to Sidon. So it's not completely out of the realm of possibility. Mm-hmm. Right, because if uh, well, yeah, because Jubaso was dead in this one. I mean, in Breath of the Wild. So 
Man, I, uh, I'm going to replay Breath of the Wild next year after this game. I'm going to play them back to back and see. I'm finally going to pull the trigger and do it. So you can get depressed after playing Age of Calamity and then have some hope renewed after yeah. playing Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Yeah, I've been I've just been really like going back and forth. I was running around Hyrule Field the other day and just like, man, I am tired of just running around the field. I want to go do some shrines and stuff. <coughs> Whoa. It is in tight. Uh, oh, I wonder uh, if you bustle's going to have the hit the lightning head rod. Yeah. Um, that crown that they wear. The crown. The mask. Rod. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you, oh, that would be cool if that, not, well, maybe DLC or some kind of cosmic cosmetics. Um, I hope that's one of them because I will, I will. I want to play as the guy that you trick into giving you boots, sand boots, and, sn- <laughs> and snow boots. Who was attracted to Link while he's dressed. Yeah. The Thunder Helm. That's what it's called, the Thunder Helm. The Thunder Helm. Yes. Yeah. I want to play as the guy um, that gives you boots. Can I play as a sand seal, please? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, man, I want to play. I want to play as one of the the Minox, just the big like one eyed like the one eyed Cyclops guys. I want to do that. Uh, oh, we're getting chastised in the chat for giving away spoilers. I know. <laughs> Breath of the Wild. Oh, come on, Bu. Sorry. It's four years old. Catch up. Uh, <laughs> what about the bird with kidding. the? Uh, with the musical instrument, uh, goodness, Cass? Talk- a lot of people Cass. think that you're yeah. gonna see like his predecessors in this game because he, like, I'm- he is the grand, like, his grandfather played the accordion thing, right? Like, I think that was the whole story behind him. And, like, you're gonna be, I don't know, I they're gonna be in this game, too. I love Cass, Cass uh, is so cool, I love him. Uh, and can- and you can play as the tree with the uh the Deku tree. You, get the cook- you want to play as a great yeah. Deku tree? Can we play yeah, as the guy that collects up. your Koroks that gives you better, bigger inventory? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, <wanna> play it. <laughs> I love him. I want a Meepo or uh, a plush of him. I actually just want to play as a Korok. I, I just want to play as a Korok, particularly the one that uses the leaves as like a little helicopter and he just flies there. Yes. Testu is the large Korok with the maracas. Yeah. I yes, want to I... play as the lady who gets upset if you step on her flowers. I think she, <laughs> she can kick some booty. <laughs> can we play as the uh, monster seller? The guy that sells you monster parts? Keaton? Yeah. Kilton. Kilton. Keaton is the uh, the yellow fox thing. <laughs> From the Pikachu-like fox. The mask. The mask. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in Majora's Mask, you actually get to see one. Can we play as the mask salesman? Oh, just tell him you haven't found Majora's Mask, and he'll get furious, and he'll set the world on fire. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if he puts on a different mask, you'll get new abilities. Just saying. Man, we just uh, I know. gotta have our Zelda fan fiction come to life. Yeah basically what this is uh but we're gonna t- just touch on monster hunter rise uh ed are are you any more impressed with monster hunter rise than you were the last time um i'm i i'm hyped for that game like i cannot wait to get it um i will say because they did say it is a custom version of the re engine yeah. so it's not the actual re engine it's yeah. the custom one and it still looks good i love the custom I love Japanese culture. I love the folklore, the look, the style, everything. And just every time I look at this in the mobility into it, I'm like, oh, I must be spending hours in this game playing it. And I, and yes, it's not going to be, it's not the Master Hunter World kind of vibe that I'm getting for the game. But I, I want to be able to kick tail in here. Hopefully they got some new weapons and hopefully it's just fun because I want to be jumping around and doing ninja attacks and like really feel like a good warrior. That's what I want to do in this game every time I look at it and I just cannot wait. So yeah, I'm still hyped. It's it's, it's right now for next year at after 3D World because 3D World is probably my most anticipated game for 2021. This is my first third party game that is my most anticipated. Mm-hmm. For next year, and then Monster Hunter stories follow underneath that. 
Yeah. Now, okay. ha- do you have to have played any other Monster Hunter games to play this one to enjoy it? No, not really. No, I think uh, I think this is like their attempt at like the way that Monster Hunter World was like m- they they made that big leap from like okay, this is a very niche product that you know you have to do certain things to play this game correctly to oh we're just gonna open it up and you know casual players can enjoy it but if you want that hardcore experience you can do that too and i think that that's what they're going for with the switch version is like this is a monster hunter for everybody to play but if you want to get into like the deep dive and like really grind out for stuff and customize your character the way that you want to play like that's also available to you um i mean i really liked what i played in monster hunter world and i i p- tried to play generations i tried to play the one on switch and it was just like It was ridiculously obtuse and difficult and didn't tell you anything, whereas Monster Hunter World really kind of not held your hand, but really gave you a better tutorial of, like, this is how Mm -hmm. the game works, this is what you need to do. Uh, You know, I'm excited for Rise because I think it's it's the perfect version of Monster Hunter where, like, it's going to give me that Monster Hunter World experience, but also I can play it in handheld mode and actually play the game, have time to play the game, you know? So, uh, but honestly, Celeste, I'm with you. I don't really know anything about Monster Hunter except for what I played in Monster Hunter World and a little bit of Generations, and I really liked what I played. I feel like I feel like you may like it if you like fighting giant monsters with swords and stuff. Uh, but. Leron is our resident encyclopedia. Yeah, Monster talk to Leron. If you want to talk about Monster Hunter, talk to Leron. He can probably give you... He, he could probably write books on that franchise for you. <laughs> I just want that cat. Yeah, he's the everywhere. Catacomb, he follows yes. you. They, they oh, ma- well, they're making, that might be the selling point. They're making a, a Palico amiibo that you can have. Yes. Does it come with a real Calico I can adopt? No. No. Oh. Uh, but I will say this. I have a cat uh, you can have. She's 12, and she's been dying for five years. You can have it. Oh, no! <laughs> I love cats. I have two cats, and I am not allowed to have more. I hate, I hate <laughs> But I want thing. them all. I want them all. It's my wife's, I, I it's my wife's cat. I married into it. I will say, uh, Celeste, do go on YouTube and watch Monster Hunter in the World cooking segments. Oh, yeah. Kind of <laughs> no, the cats and cook you, you food. For yes. real. Well, give... it's about time. I've been waiting on them long enough. It's basically have... a highly cinematic version of Link cooking at the little brown dish outside of everything, but it's like <laughs> highly cinematic and the cats do it for you. I'm looking this up and I think that it is like a Studio Ghibli movie come to life. <laughs> oh, you have my Game Pass, goodness. right? The, sh- the chef cat is awesome. So that you have Game Pass, right? Oh, uh, we let it expire until oh. we can find another deal. You know how, like, sometimes they have promotions where you mm-hmm. can save a little money. Yeah. Well, if yeah, if you, whenever you get it back, Monster Hunter World is on uh, Game Pass. So, I, if you are interested, yeah, you know, play it, and the Rob will guide you. He will help you. I didn't realize it was on Game Pass. I thought it was a strictly a Nintendo um, game. No. Not for World. World mm-hmm. wasn't even on anything Nintendo related. So, or I would have yeah. played it there and been, I don't know, ridiculed for we got, playing it on Switch, got, apparently. You can customize the cat? Yep. Yes. You can, in, you can, in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, you can give him a little parka that he can wear around in the snow. Yes. And little boots. It's, it's super cute. <laughs> 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 Uh, oh, someone, y'all understand how someone much I love crop, cats. <laughs> someone please crop that out and give that animated give that her face just now. <laughs> I didn't even see what my face looked like, so I'm sorry if it was horrible. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> so, just like, I'm so happy right now. I could just go into tears. Uh, cats and cooking? Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, that's our... Resident, our I almost, Hunter. I almost wonder if Monster Hunter stories would be better for Celeste because you get the, all that, but then you get like a, you know, like a Zelda style story almost with it. Um, it is on iPad. I think it's um. Nobody it wants on to th- play on this. iPad. Nobody wants that garbage. They say they do, but they don't. Yeah. Um. <laughs> look it up, Celeste. I'm reading about cats. <laughs> <laughs> look it up. I'm, I'm reading about the canteen. 
uh, my Sonder stories. Yeah, you can look it up and research it if you would like to play. But it's a nice, it's a nice, cool little uh, um, role playing game. Yeah. Uh, all right, this one's for you. It's our last topic of the show. Animal Crossing is unsurprisingly getting a massive fall and Halloween update. Uh, you guys still playing Animal Crossing? Because I am not. <laughs> it's on. It is on hold. I know someone said someone's gonna try to recreate. It's the Great Puck and Charlie Brown. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was that is ambitious. <laughs> you know, everybody's getting ready for this event, for this fall event, and I'm I'm excited for people who are. At this time, I I can't do it um, because of math, the Mass Effect stuff and some other stuff that I'm playing at this time. I uh, am really prepping my entertainment center for this new massive box that's going in there at some point somehow <laughs> apparently so that's uh, okay uh okay. like i said though i did retire my playstation 4 today it was uh unplugged from my tv it is now downstairs in a box with my playstation 3 and playstation 2 and uh it's time it's time for uh, a new generation uh but yeah passing that- the torch <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've I've thought about getting rid of it, but like, I don't mind getting rid of games. The, getting rid of consoles sometimes is kind of harder for me, because uh, like they, a lot of people always say you can sell your games, don't sell the hardware. But also like, hardware dies, and like, I don't know if it's just gonna sit in a box. I'd rather someone use it. You know, it's gonna get their use out of it. You know, so. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's still on the table to get rid of, but especially since the PlayStation 5 is backwards compatible with PS4, most of them, at least the games that I would play, and if I get one of those eventually, I'll just you know play those games there. But uh, Yeah, Animal Crossing has not been on my Switch in about three months. <laughs> so. It's one of those games for me, too, where I'll play it obsessively, especially right when it comes out, and then I'll put it down. I've been ready for the Halloween update since March. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm so excited because it looks like they're bringing Jack back. You can grow pumpkins, and you can make pumpkin crafts. You can change your skin color to look like a vampire or a monster this time. And you can have all these cool costumes. I do have one gripe right now because in September they announced that they were adding a few things and they said oh shake your trees and you can collect acorns and pine cones so this girl has been shaking trees every time she (laughs) plays and i have about two thousand sticks and about 500 wasp (laughs) nests wow they heart they i'm very upset with how few acorns and pine cones I can find right now. So I'm really hoping they remedy that in the update because I have not been able to make the fall tree that I have a recipe for because I'm missing acorns and pine cones. That was my rant. I mean, that's why I stopped playing because I couldn't get enough iron ore to build a... What the... I don't I don't even remember what it was at this point. <laughs> oh, you're like all the way back there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm back I to the same place where he's at. I couldn't... Um, what? I couldn't finish building something because I kept kicking rocks and it kept giving me clay. And I'm like, I need iron. Give me some iron. Right. And it's like, nope, you suck. Oh, there's a scary Easter bunny chasing you around the island, by the way. Uh, <laughs> oh, and by the way, every time you run into a tree, uh, an egg will come down and you can't get the supplies that you need because there's too many eggs to gather. And I'm just like, I hate this game. He's been, You've been um, haunted. I am. That Easter Bunny was like a a rotting Chuck E. Cheese character chasing after me. Wow. It's like, what is this? It was like Five Nights at Freddy's. Freddy's. That's not to say. (laughs) Man. So. Uh, But yeah, that's coming. And uh, hope everybody who still is playing Animal Crossing enjoys it because, uh, yeah, I I will not be playing that. Uh, So. But, you know what we do have, guys? We have two questions for the question block this week. Very excited. It's been a while since we've had, like, a a plethora of questions to choose from. Uh, Our first... uh, Well, okay, question block. You can email us at nintendopowblock at gmail.com to get your question read. Or tweet at us at Podcast or at Boss Rush Podcast. Either one is fine. Uh, 
Damien Cussler writes in. He says, this might be a dumb question, but what do you use your Switch for? Uh, like what games? I, I guess so. You know, I, 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 I don't know. What do you use your Switch for? I mean, do you use okay. it as like a coaster with your, with your beverage? Oh, wow. Or? No. So I do play games on it. That is true. It's, it's not just a Nintendo system, and it's not just uh, indie system that people say. I, I play different kind of games on there um, and help people realize because it's the system that I do a lot of collectible stuff on. It, Xenoblade Chronicles, um, uh, limited run games. Uh, uh, I'm, I, like I said, I ordered the uh, uh, I am a bit. Um, Ori stuff. So I do a lot of collectible stuff on my Switch also. But like sometimes when I'm getting ready in the morning, um, I have a Bluetooth uh, sensor connected to my Switch. And I will connect it to my uh, speaker and play music um, from YouTube or Hulu stuff while I'm getting, while I'm getting dressed and everything. So uh, I use it for... I kind of use it for that and stuff. So um, definitely when I... I make sure that it's charged. I make sure that I got a car charger. So if I do have a blackout in the house and I don't have power, I still have my gaming system to play, and I'll play that. And if I got to and I run out of energy, I'll just put it in my car, let it charge, take it out, and come back and play games and stuff. So um, I use it for that kind of purpose. That's a fair, yeah. That's a fair answer, I think. Yeah. Uh, what about what about you, Celeste? I use it for games. Uh, when I when I had, well, I still have my Wii U, but when I first got my Wii U, I used it, like Ed was saying, I used it to watch Netflix and Hulu and to play a video game on the tablet while my, um, my ex was watching TV or playing something in there. I really loved that ability. But we, we used Apple TV for the different apps to watch things. So I, I mostly use it to play games. It's, I, I thought I would prefer the switch on the TV, but honestly, I really just love it portable. I can curl up in my recliner and just relax with some Frasier golden girls or Bob's burgers on in the background. (laughs) By the way, Bob's burgers is the Bob's burgers burger cookbook that you can buy now. I I have it. Oh, do you? (laughs) Nice. Yes, I haven't made anything from it. I got it for my uh, boyfriend for his birthday, but we haven't made any burgers. But I love the puns. And the new season just started, and we just watched that episode, and it's really funny if you guys like Bob's Burgers. <laughs> it is quite good. I've never seen uh, it. I, I, th- oh, I thought you were, I had started watching it. I had I added it to our list, uh, and I watched like part of... A, like I watched an episode, and then I just kind of fell off, and I just... I, I don't know. I got distracted by other things. It's a it's a good show. You can pick up wherever. It's nice. It, it's relaxing. I, 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 you find it relaxing, Ed? You said you yeah, liked it. Yeah, I, I like it. it. The writing is good. Like the comedy is spot on. The voice acting is great. Like it is really mm-hmm. pretty, a great show. It makes me happy. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> what about you, Corey? What do you use your Switch for? Anything special? Uh, I mean, I just, I use it, I mean, it's mostly my main game machine. I mean, I, I play a lot of Xbox, but it's, the Xbox is just like a Destiny and Halo and Game Pass machine at this point. I play a lot of my Switch because I have a kid or I'm watching stuff with my wife on TV. And I mean, it's, it's that plus like running this Nintendo podcast for what, six years at this point, like, Mm -hmm. I play a lot of games that a lot of people don't usually buy on Switch because somebody has to talk about it. You know, like, I play Doom and Wolfenstein on it. I'm playing The Witcher on it still. Uh, you know, I do try to play the bigger games on this, the Switch as, as long as it gets, you know, decent reviews, I would say. Uh, if it gets bad reviews, I'm not going to really touch it. You know, I'm not I'm not getting these games for free so i have to spend my money wisely but uh Mm -hmm. well wisely in quotes i spend way too much money on on games when they're on sale and just never touch them i mean my switch is full of indie games that i've bought that are on sale and i've never touched them uh so but i mean it's 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 my main game machine honestly at this point it's uh 
I don't know. I have a lot of I have a lot of games on here. I played through the South Park games on here. I played through. I'm playing The Witcher right now. Like I said, I uh, played. I have Crash and Spyro loaded up. Like it's 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 my main game machine. You know, I I don't really know how else to say it. Uh, I do have YouTube installed. I do watch YouTube on it sometimes. Just because I'm lazy and don't feel like going through the uh, the <laughs> Xbox to get there. I just like, oh, my my TV's on my Switch channel, on my Switch input, so I'll just watch YouTube through there. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that's kind of, I, I think I use my Switch differently than a lot of other people just because of this show in particular. Uh, but I also like to see what people can do with these bigger games. You know, it was really a fascinating yeah. experience the first time I played Doom on Switch instead of my Xbox. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, it it runs fine. Like it's it's fine. You know, it's um, so. Uh, by the way, Diablo three is a great version of Diablo three on the Switch. By the way, yeah. If anybody's Need looking to for, finish it, yeah. Uh, Overwatch works on the Switch. Not not really the recommended place to play it, but it works fine. You know, I mean, I I dabble in a lot of third party games on the Switch. I'm not gonna lie. So, uh, all right, our our second question, our is comes from uh, Jack Bro Brow on Twitter at Geek Bro Twenty Seven on Twitter. He tweeted at us and says. What are your What are some things that you hope to see in Pikmin Four if and when it gets announced? Nice looking fruit, just like Pikmin Three. <laughs> um, I kind of would like to see two modes. I think I I would like to see a classic mode where you got the the day cycle. And you you know you go on the time limit, and I kind of would just like to be able to have like a sandbox easy mode where you're still doing the story campaign, but you're not limited to any time. Or and stuff, so you'll be able to experience everything in the level um, before you get ready to close out and go about your next day. I would definitely love to see that. Of course, you know, I would love. To, hopefully, they have do have touch motion in it and stuff. If if, if you, in case if you need to, you want to do like a touch, um, like the touch screen and stuff. Uh, of course, the joy cons, the joy con thing. Um, with it, uh, and I hopefully if it recognizes your saves uh, from Pikmin Three, that it unlocks something, or you know you get like an extra level or something, like one of the past levels in Pikmin Three and Pikmin Four, um, and see how those new mechanics, whatever they bring, how they work into uh, Pikmin Three and stuff. So, and maybe probably multiplayer. I would love to see. Um, like of course they gotta have to work on their online but I would love to see love to see like a four player multiplayer whether it's local or online that everybody works together to um defeat the enemies and, and like pass a level or even have their own campaign um with it. But that's what I would like to see in Pikmin Four. Celeste, what, what would you like? Are you a Pikmin fan at all? First of all, probably? I ha- I haven't I haven't played since GameCube, and I, I rented it at the time. I thought it was pretty cool, but at, now this is something I would like to see. But it may already be there. Can you customize your character, or are you always playing the same captain? You well, you can't customize your character, but in Pikmin three. There's three different characters that you play as, and uh, oh, okay. You have to kind of like use the three uh, captains strategically and get like build out their own teams of Pikmin. You're still limited to that hundred Pikmin kind of, uh, you know, limit, but you can give one guy, you know, thirty, and one guy, you know, fifty, and one guy twenty, and you can just move around the world that way and try to solve the different puzzles. Uh, as you see fit with that. Um, I personally kind of think Pikmin 3, gameplay-wise, is the the weakest of the three because I think that just took it a little bit too far in terms of, uh, you know... Sorry, I'm, I'm watching someone make a 60-egg omelet and... Uh, 
it's uh <laughs> it's snack it is it is, it is a uh item to behold uh it, it's it's just kind of like it kind of looks like an i don't know it looks it looks really delicious though uh oh. <laughs> well, uh, but I like the simplicity of the first one. Um, the second one was good too. Like I, I like, you know, having that second character there. But like, I would really like Pikmin if Pikmin Four comes. I would really like to just go back to expanding on that idea of the first game and maybe let you manage, you know, two hundred Pikmin at a time and be able to take different teams of Pikmin out to solve different puzzles. Uh, and just kind of expand on that, like make a bigger, more uh, fleshed out world for one captain instead of three or two. You know, I, I just I just think the switching between the captains and Pikmin three was just kind of like it was just like a step too far, you know, and, and I appreciate what they did. Like, I think it's an interesting mm-hmm. concept, but I think just having one captain and be, trying to solve puzzles with uh the Pikmin that you have at your disposal is really an, a better gameplay experience for me, at least. Uh, so, don't get me wrong. So, I'm going to get Pikmin 3 on Switch because uh, I like that series and I would really like the fourth one to come out at some point because it was announced five years ago. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I, I just really, I love that first game. I beat it in one sitting. Uh, when I got it, uh, I sat nice. down, I had the strategy guide. Uh, I just, I remember, I remember it cause like I had just gotten a GameCube for my birthday and I really wanted, like I got Luigi's Mansion and Tony Hawk and Pikmin was coming out. So I ended up, my mom ended up taking me to the store and I got Pikmin and the strategy guide and I sat down at, in the morning with the strategy guide and my mom made me lunch and I played Pikmin until dinner time and I ended up beating it in one sitting and I was like, oh my gosh, that was Aww. the best experience of my life. Uh, Aww. But... I it, love hearing those kind of stories. Yeah, so I don't know. I just... That first game has like this... Maybe maybe it's just like nostalgia or whatever, but... Mm-hmm. I don't know. That first game I just feel like is still like the best one that they've done. You know, and I would really like a proper sequel to that first game you know like just like an expanded version of that first game so i know two was two was probably the most popular one <coughs> out of the whole franchise yeah i mean two was great too right like i i i thought two was great also and three's great but that i don't know that first one i just feel like is the best one for me personally i want pikmin one hd please <laughs> yes uh by the way though I will admit, Pikmin 3 is better with the Wii Remote and Nunchuck. Wow. Yeah. You I know think why they're going to do that with the Joy-Con. You know why that is. It's the only way that you can move your character and your Pikmin and still throw them and aim. If you use the mm-hmm. gamepad, you have to stop, and then you have to hold one of the triggers to throw the Pikmin. If you're using the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, you just run around and, you know, yeah throw them so fun fact and you can still have the gamepad on your lap as a map so. yes uh all right so that was that was question block remember you can email us at nintendopadblock at gmail.com to get your question read right on the show or tweet at us uh but we're gonna wrap the show up with uh a, a smaller what we've been playing uh segment ed what have you been playing uh breath of the wild and hades um, I've been playing. Tell me about Hades. T- tell me about Hades. I so want to know too. So Hades is a roguelike game, and it's not as hard as Dead Cells. Um, you're actually able to move around, and you're trying to escape of uh, Hades. Um, and throughout it, you get like currency keys to unlock um, new weapons and stuff, and um, you just fight over and different things and you'll get to certain bosses and you go up it's beautiful artwork 
this game was out on Epic Game Store, but it just came to Switch, so it's like kind of like the full complete version um, of it. It's not that hard to get into. Um, you you could be zoned in for pretty much two to three hours on your runs, trying to make trying to unlock stuff. Um, but it's really easy to get to. It's really fun. It controls great with the uh, gamepad. What I mean with the pro controller, really really good. Um, the great artwork there i haven't had any frame um, no i haven't had no frame issues there hasn't been no uh slow down or anything like that the game the, part of the game does slow down to represent that you have beaten that boss or you have beaten that last enemy and then the power comes and then you'll go in you'll they'll show you a door where you could go in and if you beat that room you'll grab that item and uh, uh, the guys on the Olympics, on Olympus, you know, they'll sometimes come down, give you a power, and help you out with that. And you just build from there. Um, and the stuff that you equip is the stuff that you can keep. You like, you do keep your currency, you do keep your keys, uh, and stuff like that. So you are you are able to unlock um, different things. There are uh, hidden parts that that should show up, so you could go to like a shadow world and get something, but you have to pay the consequence of it. So if you want something, you may be cursed. Um, but if you survive like three or four rooms with that curse, you get to keep it until your run ends. You just go over and over and over. It's, it doesn't take long to load or anything. You can check your stats and like really upgrade it. Um, it it will probably if you got a good run, it looks like it'll probably take you about maybe two hours uh, if you got a good run to get to the end. But if not, you can play this game for like a long time till you get better and better. Um, once you find your groove with a certain weapon, you can continue to pick that weapon and just keep on doing that run and stuff. The uh, you do start at the beginning every time you do die, so you do have to work your way back up to the back up. Um, to where you left off so there are no shortcuts or anything you literally just got to start from the beginning and go from there um and the more that you the more battles or rooms that you get it'll it'll unlock um unlock some things in your closet uh when you start picking your weapon and you can equip that and that'll make you stronger have more life and things of that nature but it's really really good um i will say uh it's gonna if you are into dead sales, it is a good fitting game. Um, and it like I said, it does have some rogue like it's not so much like dead sales or anything. Um, because this one has more freedom, like your dash that you use, you could get super, you could get powers that you could choose from, and that it can help you attack, it can help you move faster, it could help help you like defeat enemies or poison them stuff like that so you'll get abilities that you could choose from um with it uh and that get applied to your dash or your special or anything so it's a really really good game um it's a really great game uh for a lot of people it's it's the hotness right now for switch um and for some people it's been their game is one of their game of the year nominations so um it's a great game I really, I really dig into it. You can play it for fifteen to ten minutes. You could do two runs and be like, okay, I did enough, and you'll still feel like you made progress. Yeah, uh, Super Giant makes some interesting games, right? Like I think mm-hmm. Bash. I think a lot of people kind of compare it to the combat system of Transistor. Um, yes. And you know, Bash and Transistor were their first two games, and uh, I don't know. I've been really interested in this game. I, it's the roguelike thing, man. That just is like that's the that's the only thing that's making like making me hesitant to pull the trigger. I I don't like that, you know. And I, I how long did I play Dead Cells? And I just didn't feel like I progressed at all. And, and that was a fun game. Like it felt great to play, but I don't know. I I would say for you, Corey, if. If you could get it on a like a half price sale, like if if it ends up being like ten dollars or something later on down mm-hmm. the line, and you feel like that you want to give it a try, I would say that right now I don't think it's the game for you, yeah. um, because it is a roguelike, and I don't I don't think you might not see the progress that you're making. And I can understand that, mm-hmm. um, but it is a great game. Um, if you just want to have it because you like Super Giant and you want to support them, that's fine. Um, but I, I'll say wait for a half price sale. Uh, I know. 
I think they're doing well enough to where they don't need my money at this point. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, and, and right. One they, point, I mean, they... one point one million copies is nothing to you know sneeze at at this point. And and that's the, and that's the one of the weirdest thing is that everybody, people weren't talking about Hades when it was on the Epic Game Store, and then it hit Switch, and everybody's talking about. It. Yeah. Switch owners, I should say. Yeah. Uh, Celeste, what are you playing? Anything new and interesting and fun? Getting angry at Super Mario Sunshine all over again mm. with the floodless <laughs> levels. Yeah. Very sensitive controls. It brings me back to 2002. <laughs> yeah. but, Is it bad? I, I haven't even taken the game out of the box yet. No, not... I mean, there's so many games right now. I didn't it's, even... Um, I didn't even open my physical copy. It's sealed still too. He's gonna keep it for another twenty years. I am. <laughs> I still have I'm my. Picking on you. I still have my twenty fifth anniversary uh, Mario collection sealed. So. Yes. This one's gonna oh, yeah, go right with it. And then, I haven't been playing too much. I uh, been reading here and there, and falling asleep early, <laughs> but. For our next talk, The Walk, we're playing Soma. So I picked that up over this weekend, and I'm almost done. I'm going to play it this coming weekend because it is a daylight game <laughs> for me. Ah, okay. <laughs> I need to catch up to where you at, uh, Celeste. I'm um, almost done. I am uh, I guess I'm about three-fourths of the way through the game. I, I am using a guide to help me if I get stuck because I'm more interested in the story and mm-hmm. character development than puzzles. I'm like, if I if I get frustrated with the puzzle, I'll just look it up. I don't care. And, does, it fe- does it feel long or it's not that long? I looked it up and it says roughly 11 hours. If you're like me and you like to explore every nook and cranny, read everything, pick up every item and mm-hmm. turn it over, I guess that's about right. But I'm also playing on easy mode, on safe mode, because I so I won't have to worry about the enemies. Or you're playing on normal mode, right? Yes, I'm playing. So okay, so you're gonna. It might take you a little longer just because you're gonna have to evade all of those. There, there aren't that many. It's the suspense is what makes it scary. And honestly, well, I'm gonna keep my discussion for talk to for talk the walk, but. Mm-hmm. The, mo- the creatures are not the scariest part of that game. That's all I'm going to say. But I am enjoying the existential questions that arise from playing this game. It's definitely thought-provoking. I, I-, I recommend it. And I-, I paid 30 bucks for it on PlayStation 4, and I think it's worth 30 bucks. Uh, nice. Like it? Um, well, for me, I've been... <laughs> I've been playing uh, a lot of Mario 64, uh, and by a lot, I mean I've gotten 10 stars. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. That game, I've been... I don't know, man. I just I feel like I have so much love and nostalgia for the, these games, and I just am not into it at the like i don't know maybe i'm just in like this gaming wall where like i just can't find anything that's grabbing me at the moment you know and and i thought mario 64 i was like man i'm gonna go back and play mario 64 i love that game uh and and i just i don't know i just haven't found anything lately that's grabbing me you know and and I tried to play some of the Avengers the other night, which I, which I was really enjoying, and it's it's hard crashed on me three times in the last week, and Aww. and like I can't I can't play it until they patch it, you know, and they they've patched it twice since I and it's still crashed. So I even tried deleting it and reinstalling it, and it just was not. I don't know. I'm probably gonna have to wait till the new consoles come out to to play that game because it's just not doing what I want it to do. Uh, but Mario 64 is, is kind of all I've really been playing. Uh, so I also went, I also went to bed at like nine 30 and 10 o'clock on, on Friday and Saturday night. So I just didn't play any games at all. <laughs> you needed it. I you know. played your dreams. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it was a long week last week in terms of not just this, but like work and, uh, I, and and just trying to balance everything. It was just a, it was a long week. So, catching up on some on some Z's was was the game that I played, and it was 
It was great. Needed it. David I... Last is in the chat, and he recommends Child of Light. Yeah, I've played. Yes, I, I've played Child of Light. I played it. What on somewhere? To... I played it on Wii U. Maybe that's where I played. I feel it. like we've mentioned. I think we. I think y'all mentioned it to me. Um, let me see if I yeah, because it was... it's it's made on the the UB Arts engine, which is what the Rayman games are made on. Uh, yeah. Ah. Okay. Yeah, I may have to buy it for Switch. I didn't I haven't bought it yet for Switch. I do I have it on Wii U, no. Yeah. Uh. So that's kind of that's kind of it, but we're gonna we're gonna wrap the show. Uh, this was a this was a good show. We are kind of on time, and I know everybody's just kind of like, Bleh. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for watching this live on Twitch. Remember, you can catch us live on Monday nights here on twitch.tv slash Bosch Rush Games Live, or catch the show on Wednesdays on your podcast service of choice. Remember, we're giving away Pikmin Three Deluxe uh, digital code. So. Uh, how you can win that is in the show notes or at the top of the show. Well, mid of the show, I guess. <laughs> uh, so remember to, to get your entries in. You have until October 26th to get those in uh, because we are announcing the winner on the live show that day. So what is that, five weeks away now? Yep, five weeks You guys weeks can win. Uh, so get those in. You have five weeks to get those in. Uh yeah, you can catch our family of shows on BossRushGames.com. You can check out uh, our newest shows uh, coming soon. I know Logan is bringing trash talk to Boss Rush Games, so that's exciting. If you're into uh, sports talk, Ed's WeCap show is debuting next week as well. And uh, Talk the Walk is coming. The, n- the next episode of that is coming as well. So I'm very, yeah. very excited about yes. all these new shows. Uh, so, uh, Ed, where can we find you at? You guys can find me on Twitter at that retrocode. Check out Option Opinion on SoundCloud and check me on Twitch at that retrocode. I am playing Vanquish, uh, and I'm going to be working on it. Uh, so you guys can check me there on Twitch. Nice, Celeste. Where can we find you? You can find me at Fairy Crypt on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm also with another Zelda podcast. We had a recent episode come out a few weeks ago on the different iterations of Kakariko Village. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I, I, and that was really fun to listen to. I would like to formally ask a question for the next episode. How many versions of the killer chickens are there? Is this a, is this a trick question? Like I don't know. I was just messing with you. Like how many games featured the killer chicken? <laughs> no, I want to know. I want to know how many specific species of killer chickens there are throughout the Zelda <laughs> canon. I think, I think it's just one species. But <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, there there's a blue version Kojiro in Ocarina of Time. Yeah. See, there's two species now. Mm, oh, blue. Uh, <laughs> Hey, do those little creepy face ukos in Twilight Princess count as cuckoos? I don't know. Cuckoos? You know who I'm? You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like them. The weird they birds with the out. people faces. <laughs> this is weird. Yes, I think they're based off something in mythology or. Can we? Or... By the way, can we just get Wind Waker and Twilight Princess on Switch already, please? Like, <sighs> can we just get them already? I'm I'm ready for them. Like. David Lasby reminded us that there is a gold version of Cuckoos. Ooh. Cuckoos. That is uh, right. Is... All right. Well, we can we can talk about this the the on the next episode. Oh. Uh you could <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh I think our good friend David is it David Wayne uh with the Zelda book. David Knight, yeah, David Wayne Nystrom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he uh had a picture of his book uh Hopefully that'll be out next year. Um, but congratulations to him, like just showing up the hard case. It looks really, really nice. Yeah, so just want to shout him out for that. We're gonna do something for him when that book comes out, for sure. Um, and we'll have him on to promote it and whatever uh, he needs. We'll, we'll, we're gonna, we'll do something. It's for good him. stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. If you follow it, Era Without a Hero, highly recommend it. Yeah, it's it's really an interesting uh, feed and, and just. Yeah, so 
definitely definitely follow him but uh you can follow me at i am cory and hd on twitter and instagram you can also find me on a plethora of other shows if you're into destiny you can check out tower casuals if you're an xbox you can check out arsenal x and of course the boss rush podcast hosted by eddie v himself and crossroads our playstation show 1v1 hosted by celeste and uh the rest coming soon I want to thank everybody so much for watching and or listening. Check out BossRushGames.com. And until next week, we love you. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Woo-hoo. Bye, guys. Good night.